friends and welcome back to my channel. I am Caitlin and this is where I teach you everything I know about sewing and we learn more together along the way. Today I am sharing my completed sewing room. We're calling it completed. There's like just some tiny little things that need doing yet, but for the most part it's done and I'm here to give you a tour. But first we need to tackle this mess. This project has been about two years in the making. So if you're unfamiliar with kind of the journey of this studio, I do have videos below that I will pop in the description box for you to check out kind of, you know, the first, the second, I think there's maybe three-ish videos kind of over the past two and a half-ish years. It, it was an addition in, to our house just for me. The The plan is eventually that it will become a second living space for our kids as they get older and want kind of, you know, to be a little bit separated from mom and dad. And when that happens, it will be because I have a separate studio space. So that is my goal, to have a separate building, probably on our property, perhaps on another property that we will maybe purchase in the future. But uh, I know a really good carpenter, so anything is possible as long as the funds are there. <laughs> Which is, of course, all because of you guys. So thank you so, so much for t continuously tuning into my videos. And if you are new here and this is your first video, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button so that you can be around for future content that comes out here. Okay, so let's just get on to the tour. Now everything that you're seeing is pretty custom. That's kind of just how we roll. Again, my husband is a carpenter uh, and I am fairly handy. I try to be fairly handy. I try to have a pretty good uh, kind of like unique design ideas. So he brings that to life for me and we kind of try and make everything fit exactly in the space to maximize every inch. And also that things can be potentially multi-purpose. So I'm gonna take you around. What I can link, there's only probably gonna be a few things, but what I can link, I will definitely do that. A lot of stuff is thrifted or secondhand, like any of the knickknacks and stuff like that, or, or inherited. So I won't really have links for any of that stuff. Um, but there is a couple Ikea things, and then a sewing machine, and some patterns, and stuff like that that you will see, and I can link down below for anybody interested. So, okay, for real now, let's get on to the tour. Okay, so when you walk up from our entrance, this is kind of what you see. Not ideal, but it's just the way that it happened with the way that we did our addition and our entrance and everything else. So you come in to my sewing room. So normally, if I had a closed off room, this place would be a disaster 24 seven. So I'm quite happy with the fact that I try to keep it tidy because people see it. I guess that's one way of kind of staying on top of things. I also try to keep it tidy because it's not a huge space. I think we're about, we're 12 feet long, the long way, and then it's about eight feet to where I'm standing here, and then, of course, the stairwell is here. So it's about, essentially it's a 12 by eight room with a little bit extra. That's kind of the space I have, and the majority of it is taken up by counter and storage space. So first off here, we have this custom bank of drawers, and this is where I keep my fabric stash. So the first drawer I have scraps in. Ideally things will be a little bit different once I get control of my fabric stash a little bit more. I would like to have the two drawers for fabrics on the bottom and then this top drawer be just for scraps like it is now. However, I do still have significant scraps out in the garage which I've been thinking about getting rid of. Um, it feels really wrong for me, but I just it's just so much and unless I'm making something like a poof or a dress form or something that uses a ton of that then I'm probably never going to get through all the little stuffing type of scraps anyway. So in here I just have kept some of the bigger pieces that you know that I might use up and things that could come in handy for testing and practicing and things like that. I also stuck in my DIY pressing hams. I do have a video on this that I can link below for you guys too. So that's what's in the top drawer and then going down we have knits and wovens primarily. There's a little bit of discrepancy in each drawer but that's kind of how things are. Now moving over here this is my pressing station. So I actually made this pressing mat I think in the same video as those pressing hams and it is um, three layers of a mystery fabric that is not wool and then three layers of wool, felted wool and it, it works out pretty good. It's got a little bit of 
excess here that I should probably deal with but probably won't. Also underneath it was slipping around so I just grabbed a rug pad from the dollar store and it works fantastically. Thank you to the few of you who did suggest that. I don't know why I didn't think of it because I use those in other places in my home. On top here I just have my magnetic needle pin dish. I have a bowl full of clips and I have this little scrappy basket, which actually, again, I think was made in the same video as this and the pressing caps. Then my iron is here. It go, it's plugged in actually behind here. And my iron is on a light switch. So this iron is cordless, but it doesn't have an on off switch. So it does shut off automatically after so many minutes, but I don't really like that. So I like having it on a switch. I can flip it on and then I can flip it off when I'm not using it. Up here you can see these are just Ikea picture ledges. wasn't really sure if I was gonna like these or not. I'm still undecided. Right now I just have some printed patterns displayed here and then just this little DIY plant stuff like that. I think it's okay. I still don't know if it's really my aesthetic. I like a more minimalist look but it's okay for now and we'll see how things go. Now moving into the corner, I have my, my main workspace. So this is where I have my main machine. It is the Faf Ambition 610. I have some videos, I will link them be below. And I have this chair. This chair, would not recommend. It's from Wayfair. I don't know what I was thinking, but I got like a faux leather kind of thing and I it's, it's going to be worn out before too long because it, it gets caught on what I used to have here for countertops and the kids I think jam pins in it and it's just not great. But when you are buying a rolling chair for yourself, upgrade to roller blade wheels. I saw this in a Facebook group, best thing ever. It rolls around so great. It was a bit of a splurge to get the, the upgraded wheels, but I definitely recommend it. I think I picked mine up on Amazon. Again, I'll try and link them if I can. And then on this side, I have my serger. So in a row here, I have serger, sewing machine, and pressing station, and that has been working really, really well for me. In the very corner back here, I don't know what to do with it. I was thinking of doing some sort of custom built-in tower with some drawers that I can put bobbins and sewing machine accessories and some scissors and things like that. Right now, I just have a couple different cups holding things and another pin dish. This was a cor uh, the top from a candle and it's cork, so I'm using it as like a pin holder a little bit more for looks than anything. So as time goes on, I might upgrade that or I might just leave it until I get a different space. The L shape is nice for this space but it also kind of gives you some lost opportunity I guess because that's a really big area that nothing is happening in. I'm going to bring you down and show you what's going on in the corner underneath in just a minute but first let's check out what's above. Alright so up here is quite possibly one of my most favorite parts of my sewing room aesthetically. On the other side of this there is our entrance closet and we didn't want to do it like all the way to the ceiling because that's a lot of space that we couldn't really use. I mean, I could have done a plant shelf. Still talked about opening these, this up and just having the light pour in from the other side because there's a nice big window there. But for now, this is what we've done. We made a shelf here, base, and then a smaller shelf up here that you can see. I hand painted this in the background kind of the color theme for our whole house. We're in the middle of redecorating everything, so that's kind of was the first project. And then I just have Betty here, my, my vintage machine. I would love to have her set up to be used, but in this space, there just really isn't the opportunity. So when I get a separate studio, she will have a, a usable home that we can really appreciate her. I do have a video all about her too. Then I just have like some little knickknacks that have either been given to me or that I have purchased from wherever. These are all vintage threads, so yes, they get direct light, but it's, it's they're vintage. I don't use them, they're just for decoration. I love this space, I love looking at it. Um, it just brings me a lot of joy. So down here we have um, kind of like an open shelf because I couldn't have a drawer that, like I wouldn't be able to get into it. Does that make sense? So we have the open shelf here. I keep my blade seam ripper here, needles, tags, and just some like odds and ends in these baskets. I think these are from Dollar Tree. And then in here, I just have interfacing, stuff like that. 
This drawer is buttons mainly, snaps, and then just some tools and odds and ends. And then down here is zippers. So I have a ton of zippers and I also have a bunch of extra scissors and rotary blades and things like that that I don't know, I should probably get rid of some, but when I do sewing classes, they're really handy for that. So while we're down here, let's move over here to these cubes. Hooray for cube storage, face very white. Okay, so um, yeah, my husband built this to fit between this bank of drawers that I just showed you and the next bank of drawers and it's to give extra support to the counter which I think works fantastically. I made it so that, actually I didn't. I um, We kind of just like divided it up into four squares and then two high and it just happens to fit these Dollar Tree bins perfectly. Again, I know most of us don't love shopping at the Dollar Tree but sometimes it is a necessary evil. So in here I have elastics, all kinds of elastics. So then down here, I just have some books. They do not fit the other way, most of them. So that's kind of a bummer. Some of these need to go when we have our shop done, like for our business, uh, they will be going in there. Actually, most of these will be going there. And then here I just have my Singer books. In this bin, I have stamps for like card making, crafting, that kind of thing. This is just general craft supplies. That one has what's in there, trims like bias tapes and peak, uh, rip rack and stuff like that. And then down here is actually empty. So I thought I could put like stuff that I'm working on in there. I don't know, we'll see if it actually happens. And then you're all like, what about that mess on top? Yeah, so I have my lights in here, which was working, you know, that was just fine. But then I also needed somewhere to put this big book for our business. I needed somewhere to put this bolt of muslin. Um, this right angle T-square doesn't really fit anywhere else. So that's kind of a bummer that that's in there. And then I have my uh, block there. But yeah, so that's all just kind of shoved in there. Hopefully, you know, I can get to a point where some of this stuff is done away with and then I don't need it there. I could probably fold this up, but it is handy to have it on the bolt. And then over there, I just have a little nail and I have my quilting grid ruler and then my French curve hanging there. And those work really handy. They're easy to get at. So now here we are above the cubby system and this is where I keep my, well, you've already seen my serger. That's the corner back there. This is kind of just a pile of alterations I need to do. This is not typical for it to be in here. I just kind of had a bunch of things pile up. So I need to probably tackle that. Then I have my cover stitch here. So my cover stitch, my serger, and then my straight stitch sewing machine, my regular sewing machine are kind of my three main machines at this point. I have a lot more, but that's what I have out right now. That's what I use on a regular basis. Oh, and these also are part of alterations. Those are that. So now I'm gonna bring you up and show you what the heck these supports are for. Okay, so here we are. You can now see this entire shelf. Uh, it's a toss up whether this is my favorite part or that cubby is my favorite part, but it might be this just because it is more open. You can see it's not done. I have an art project that we're gonna be doing here or like a, a frame project, I guess. I have the picture printed, it just needs to be framed. And then I just have a couple things. So I have some sewing books, some of the prettier ones that I wanna display. I have my favorite houseplant here, some vintage oil, so oil, oilers, I don't know what they're called. And then this is my pressing block that my husband made me. Very special. I do use it lots. I wish it would fit on the Ikea picture ledges, but it doesn't. So I just have it here being displayed and I also use it. And then I just have, this was my grandma's and this was actually my grandpa's. Can you even see that? Yeah. And then just another plant and a little plasticine thing. So that's what I have going on there just for fun decoration. Pretty minimal. I have room to expand it if I want to. So now we have this section, and this section is kind of the home office work area, and then a little bit of sewing stuff in here, but mostly it's home office. So this board right here is for our business. Normally it has, you know, the calendar, jobs we're working on, stuff like that, but I erased it all for this video because, I don't know, it seems 
too personal to have on the internet, so I don't like showing that. So I did erase it all. Um, it's almost March, so I can just do it for March when I go to redo it. Then I have my Cricut. It lives here, right beside the computer. I use it a little bit, not a lot. I've considered getting rid of it, uh, but I haven't decided for sure yet. Then I have another bank of three drawers, and this one is similar to that first bank. However, the bottom drawer is deeper, and then the top two are the same size, but narrower than the other ones. That is because in the bottom I actually have made it for file folders and that's where I used to keep my sewing patterns. Well, I do still keep my printed patterns there, but I use a projector now so I don't really have much for printed sewing patterns other than, you know, vintage envelopes and, well, modern day ones as well. So I'll show you that too. But in the top drawer I have, this is all kind of Cricut stuff and card making and that kind of paper crafts and my glue gun and just some like random stuff. So there's some files in there that I need to go through for taxes. And then the second drawer is just for sewing. And this is where I keep my threads and bobbins and things like that. Kind of everything that goes with the machines and then thread and, and what have you, manuals, whatever. And then again, the bottom drawer is for files. Oh, and I forgot to mention about these poles. So you can see this one is worn off. These were uh, from Ikea in the clearance section, and they're silver. And I bought primer to use on them before we painted them black, but my husband didn't realize that. So he just painted them black with spray paint, which they turned out great, but they scuff and, and mark up really easy. So I'll probably have to redo those. And then if we move along here is my computer. Obviously we did like, this is very, very custom solution, which I think I'll bring you in and show you exactly how it looks, but um, there's nothing really special. I do have a lamp there, a basket, like it's not, uh, like nothing too crazy. Again, once we have our shop office finished, then it'll mitigate a lot of the clutter that's going on here. Let me just show you what's going on underneath. Okay, so it looks pretty basic, right? Keyboard, keyboard pull out, you know, I got a printer, I got shelves and stuff like that. We did a little bit of custom stuff here. So behind here is actually like a secret drawer. I just have like, I don't know, computer stuff in there, cords, extra pens, some notebooks, stuff like that. And then down below we have some files and our printer. And then over here, we have a drawer, which again, pretty normal, but this is where it gets really custom. So this is where my computer is. However, we often need access to, you know, the side, the back of the computer. So we made this open up as well. I'm not gonna move the printer and everything, but this does open all the way up and then I can access the back, I can clean in there. We can, you know, even stick extra things in there. I pretty much always, keep it closed um we still have to put a magnet on there to keep it closed but i just keep the printer up against there and then this door i kind of crack because when the computer is running because i don't want it getting too hot in there it, it is quite warm in there so it's nice to be able to have that open and yeah i think that's all for this area and there's just a couple things left to show you. All right, now over here is where I have my industrial machine. So this is beside the desk. So there's the L shape we just went through, the computer is there, and then this, obviously you'll, you'll have seen the overview and everything, but I did just do a video on this, it'll be linked below. This was my grandma's machine and it is now my machine and I've only recently started like getting, getting into it or trying to, you know, use it and I need some smaller needles. So my grandma sewed mostly denim and then Fortrell, like she sewed rugs out of denim and quilts and stuff like that, but she only had big, bigger needles. Like I think they were size 19. So yeah, they were pretty big and bigger than most things I will use unless it's for denim. So I just need to get some needles and yeah, but that lives here. Before we had this here, it was nice to have this open space, but I wanted this in here and I had to make some sacrifices for it, so that's what we did. Again, when we have a new studio space, this will have its own place to live, but for now, it's just here beside the door and under the window. 
Okay, so then this space you might recognize if you've been here for a while. I sometimes film here. And it was actually created to be a filming station, but the light that comes through that window is just so much that it causes half shadow on my face. So I don't film here very often. I should probably get a blind for that window or, you know, sew a curtain or something like that. But for now, this is what it is. That chair, I do not like having it there, but that's just where it is right now when we're kind of in the middle of redoing our house. So in this space, I just have my homemade dress form that needs a little bit of work. That is a pattern. I did, a, again, a video on that. I will link it below. Then I just have a plant there. And yeah, that chair that I don't like being there because number one is blocking the door. And number two, wow, thanks Peggy. Number two, it just doesn't need to be there. And the final thing to share with you is my cutting table. This is directly below my projector. I keep my cutting mat on here. This is an Ikea table. I will link it below. It, the two sides wing out. So this bank of drawers here that you see is all that remains and that is why we got it. So I wanted to have a custom table built by my husband that kind of did all kinds of funky stuff but this was only I think 200 and some dollars and that we probably wouldn't even get material for what I wanted for that price so we picked it up and we always thought you know if I don't like it we can resell it but I love it at Christmas time we folded it all away and we popped it under there which fit perfectly it was so so good it leaves so much space in here we've done that a few times but when we just need extra space for things move this out of the way it's excellent usually I just keep this one side flipped up because my cutting mat can stay on here working on something right now but that's not going to be talked about right now and then when I do need to you know roll out more fabric I can lift this up and it is so much storage under here I just have where I throw my cut it off cuts and stuff like that straps that then gets bagged up and taken out or put into the scrap bin. Oh, in the bottom two drawers there is serger cones thread. The top one I just keep my tripod for my phone. And then on this side, the bottom two are serger threads and then the top one is um, like cutting stuff. So I have rotary cutters, scissors, pattern weights, marking stuff, that kind of thing. So there you have it, that's the end of my sewing room tour. I hope it was fun for you to watch, maybe give you some inspiration for your own space. Thanks so much for sticking around. If you want to see a bonus video this weekend, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you're notified exactly when it's posted. It is a good one, so you don't wanna miss that. Free patterns, all I'm gonna say, see you then. Thanks so much for watching, bye.